Good morning. And, Good morning. Uh, yeah, welcome to the uh, Shamble Stay at Home Festival. How are you, Josie Long? Your hair oh. looks great, by the way. I just saw you just do a little bit of on camera. Uh, that was just Thanks. good. It's it, it's called unintentionally growing out your fringe, and so I get to kind of <laughs> curve it round, which is a delight. Oh, I'm all right. I, a really really delightful thing happened over the weekend to me. Can I tell you? Yes. So, I was cuddling my daughter, and I said, "I love you," and she said, "I love you too, mummy." For that the first good. time, because you For two have not been time. getting on, have you? No, we don't that get that. We've not gone on until now. <laughs> disaster. Mm. And it's just nice that she's finally decided to bury the hatchet and uh, and behave a bit more maturely about things. Also, I remembered that when she was born, I bought a paddling pool, which in our old flat we didn't have any outside space. So God knows what I thought I was going to do with it. And yesterday, when it was sunny. We've got a very little um, garden and I put it out and uh, she sat in it for an hour. So, I mean, I, I simply couldn't have had a better weekend. I can't imagine any other circumstances that could have been better. How are you? Well, I, How are you? Oh, good. And it's, uh, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying in terms of that family thing, the thing that I enjoy. We do exercise together, my son and I, every, every day. And uh, he saw me uh, on my uh, 50th birthday. I was surprised. I was on tour with Brian Cox and uh, we were in Aberdeen. And suddenly my wife and my son and one of my sisters turned up. It was all kind of surprise i didn't know about it and uh and brian and me always went out boxing on the beach that's the way you stay uh contented on a hundred date tour where you're working in close proximity with someone is you punch each other every day <laughs> but in a very kind of specific and fashioned and controlled manner he really enjoyed that my son my son really enjoyed that and uh so i um so he started so we've got some little pads and we've got some boxing gloves and every single day we do that so that to me is one of the things that i uh, i delight in as much as uh, obviously watching rick mail in the young ones uh, as well the family <laughs> that boxes together <laughs> <laughs> um so have you got a uh uh, oh, by the way, I'll mention one other thing because we've been talking about some of the things that we've seen and things that other, you know, recommendations. Can I? Uh, I watched it again for a second time at the weekend, and I really think it's a magnificent film. And if you're sometimes a bit of a kind of, you know, snob like me, a little bit like, I mean, the thing that I love about Tarkovsky is it's so long and so little happens, and that is one of the reasons I love Tarkovsky as well. I really do. But um, I, I love War for the Planet of the Apes. Is just a fantastic film so if you're someone who sometimes thinks i don't really think that the uh the thriller or action genre is is and then obviously you can the you know, mad max fury roads magnificent uh logan's magnificent but uh walk the planet of the apes has an amazing score fantastic performances and is a very beautiful film i really enjoyed, really enjoyed dawn of the planet of the apes dot potter yeah i i, th I think they're all i, th I think oh. they're a really interesting trilogy I have a tip for something that I watched yesterday, which was so wonderful. It's In My Skin by Kaylee Llewellyn. It's a um, uh, sort of comedy drama, I suppose. That beautiful, like, hinterland genre. And it's on the iPlayer. It's on BBC Three. And it's about a teenage girl uh, growing up with difficulties at home and trying to sort of live her life despite it. And it's really, really beautiful and funny and great. And the performances are great. And the writing is great. I loved it. I and it's only five part but obviously you assume it's going to be six part because it's five half hours and so when the fifth one was finishing I was like wow this is so interesting like it really feels like the end you know how are they going to do another episode I can't wait and then I was like no, no I felt genuinely robbed of the final episode oh I can, I can do a five episode uh I 10 if if someone in the house goes let's start watching this I go straight on wikipedia look what happens in episode 10 so I won't tell you but um, it, frankly, it doesn't look like it's going to be a satisfying ride. Um, what is your show and tell? To oh, God. Sorry. So this, as you'll see, uh, Josie Long, Heads Up Breaststroke, Series, Series B, B, Gender F, Race Number 86, Assembly Time. It's the UK Cold Water Swimming Championships from 2011. Now, as you can see, I was in the final there, not in the heats. Yeah. And the reason for that is not enough people wanted to do the race to have any heats. And I would say, if you'd like to become, as I am, an accomplished athlete, choose something everyone else hates. Because <laughs> you will forever remember that you're in the final. Now, you, now, Robin, you may be thinking, 
were you so bad that you took a full minute longer than all the other swimmers? And to answer that, I would say, yes, yes, I was. Was it so embarrassing for everyone that they had to delay the next race? Yes, yes, it was. They can't take it away from me. <laughs> they can't take it away from me. And um, what was your show and tell? Oh, do you know what I would say? I, I am very, very similar in sporting achievement to you. The only uh, team I've ever been in at school, I was in the third 11 cricket team. Uh, oh, was the third 11. The reason for the third 11 was only 27 boys signed up to do cricket. So that already meant there were only five of us officially. Then they managed to drag together six other people. Uh, and uh, once we had a four-hour trip to another school to go and uh, and play a game, uh, we were all out in uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> they got our score in four minutes. And frankly, uh, our teacher was not happy in the minibus. Um, <laughs> what I was going to... I'm proud. I'm proud of my. No, I was on the netball D team, which means that I was in the bottom <laughs> twenty-one to twenty-eight girls. Uh, and, that, and the D team, and do you know what? We really lived up to that 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 name. So <laughs> much so more nice. time for the library. Lucky us. Um, mm. The uh, my show today. Very. I was going to show because they showed villain over the weekend. The uh, Richard Burton Ian McShane uh, gangster movie. Very interesting movie. And uh, I I couldn't find it. I tried to have it today. My dad. The only auction he's ever been to, uh, and the only thing he's ever bid on, and he bought it for me is Donald Sinden shooting script of the film Villain. So that was show and tell the other day. Uh, another day. But for the time being, I just thought I'd show you Kurt Vonnegut. This uh, is a lovely oh. Kurt Vonnegut doll that uh, I was I was given by someone who's uh, uh, regularly comes to gigs and regularly comes to uh, the Nine Lessons of Carols for Curious People. And so here is uh, Kurt Vonnegut, my show and tell. There is no more to say than that. You know oh, the Oh, that's fun. Really fun. So wow. today we are joined by uh, Russell Kane, uh, comedian. Author, Hello. Viver, Viver, broadcaster. broadcaster. Um, I always hear the adverts for your podcast, um, and it's always you say, um, with the podcast, uh, millions of downloads. Not going to be, uh, uh, I, I, don't know, I can't remember it, how you say it, but I always enjoy hearing one. your voice. They yeah, because otherwise, they're coming for the license fee if I don't brag. <laughs> Every, everything on the BBC that's successful, I promise you, my producer team are like, make sure you say we're smash hit, make sure you say we're top 10. I They're very, very proud true. of that. I liked it. I was, I was like, that's nice. It's nice to being like in it, voice. it gets me into a lot of trouble, that, that show. Every, I mean, I almost dread an episode coming out. We just Elvis has come out this week. And the more sort of loyal following people have, we're talking about the show Evil Genius. Where oh, yeah, sorry. Of, yeah. We're, so you, we, we take taking down, sacred, down cows. sacred cows, isn't it? Or up, um, sacred lizards. So yeah. sometimes, sometimes we'll take people like bernard manning and keep throwing glitter at them till the till the panel can't take it you know we do episodes in both directions but whatever happens i you know my family and everyone around me get very well wishes every wednesday when they come out <laughs> <I> imagine <laughs> who's been my the hardest wished away once a week who's been the one where <laughs> where you really trying to find that angle there must be one where you feel a level of kind of nausea and a tightening of the stomach as you attempt to in which direct? I mean, the Bernard Manning episode was tricky. Obviously, I come from the university of of, of lefty comics, so I I have to try and be neutral. Um, so I had an idea before we started the record. I told the audience it was a warm up that I come and warm the audience up, which I never do really. For Evil Genius, it happened to be a live episode, and I just did not the racist or really offensive ones, but I did do ten minutes of Bernard Manning jokes. I said I was trying something new, reading out jokes. We recorded them laughing. And then we sat down for like a cultural discussion about the nature of funny and blah, blah, blah. And then halfway through, all this audience were very comfortable and knew how they felt. I dropped on them. They'd been laughing and clapping at the material of Bernard Manning at the top. It was quite a good experiment. It wasn't very popular, as you can imagine. That's interesting. Uh, I, I think I wouldn't, I don't think I'd have a, a, have a, a, pro a problem with Bernard, though, you know, I, I think I could do it. But some of the what characters you've done. Like? What do you like it? <laughs> but uh, some of it, I, I mean, some of the political people that you have to deal with, some of those kind of cultural, there the, the must be, well, I suppose you have the other side of it then, people that you adore, that you are, are dragging into a mire, who, who is the hardest to do that with? I think the episode word. I struggled most to get a handle on anything bad was Amy Winehouse. And in fact, mm. it wasn't the most successful episode. We went down um, the route of, she was one of the, the sort of original people that glamorised toxic love and, 
sort of junky, messed up, toxic dependency. And she, she put it out there in a PR. So we tried to go down that angle, but it's all sort of fine. Just look at my might have looked a bit mean spirited. It was still a very interesting episode. I think when she you, did. Sorry. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say when you they how did when you, you how did you think of the idea? Was it that you took, found one particular person that you were then really shocked at kind of understanding sorry. more about? It's so uh, so I get yeah, ra- Radio Four because at Radio Four I represent diversity because I sound common, so it's great. So I get loads <laughs> of work over there, and uh, so I had a meeting and I'd like my P, you know, what, I'm like hundred miles an hour PDF document. This is why the idea works for my advertising day. This is the this is this is the format points. I like, really <laughs> over the top, like slick oil man. And uh, I went, they were like they liked all the ideas, and then just right at the end of the meeting, it was just as the Harvey Weinstein thing was breaking. I was talking with these two producers about how in the pub last night with my mates, we were like, well, does it, should you even watch a Harvey? Like even when, when I see now produced by Harvey Weinstein at the top of a movie I love, it goes through your head. Do I even, should I watch that? So there's an uncomfortable feeling before you, the movie starts. And that's, then we started talking with nothing written down with this Radio 4 producer. Well, that would make a great idea. What if you couldn't enjoy the things you love? Because the evil is built to a point where you've got mm-hmm. to throw the, the cultural artifact in the bin. And we were like, boom, evil genius. It was, it was literally like that. <laughs> with no work. <laughs> so, got from a drunk up argument in the pub the night before. <laughs> Do you have a lot? Because I think it's interesting. It's interesting. There is, there is, it's been discussed a lot in the last few years. You know, some people would say, well, there's the art and there's the human being. And, uh, you know, I, I think with Morrissey, there's been a kind of a lot of that of, 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 of late. <laughs> and uh, and for me, I have found... I've, over... I've really struggled with stop listening to Morrissey. It's yeah, really I thought hurt. you might do. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, but, but I've never had... I mean, one, I didn't have a struggle because I'm 51 years old and therefore I've left some of that kind of emotional what detritus behind. Uh, so it's... Uh... Honestly, Honestly any... anyone who is still listening to Morrissey is beyond, like, beyond oh, help. I'm like... Oh, no. ha- how for he's me, even fact, helped you by making terrible music for 10 years <laughs> like me, his help them help make him interesting <laughs> oh you see that i don't think that, weirdly enough i don't think it's terrible now but i don't i don't really listen to it because one i mean my thing generally no, is, I, have to be fair, the, I haven't listened to it well i, I think that uh, <laughs> just, you're going to be a journalist at this rate <laughs> yeah. i haven't I've, watched the speech but i think the speech was very important <laughs> yeah and, uh, I, i'm very angry about this play i have no idea what it's about but I'm, i've really had to fill 500 <laughs> words by monday um, but I, I i do find like for him it's just that because so much of his narrative appears to be a personal narrative in his songs if he appears to be someone that i go ah oh, i really disagree with a lot of your takes on humanity then i don't want him to hear him singing about humanity it's my you know that and so i think there is that thing where for i found with a lot of people i can't separate the art from the human being because i think art comes from i mean we talked about that i think with you were saying about one of your favorite authors is is evelyn war and that is a a fascinating well that was the pilot we we did that in the end because i needed someone i knew a lot about (laughs) because we wanted to record it straight away but i funny enough i'm not i'm not name dropping i just happened to be on a program with this person I was sat like, you know, the backstage bit with Andrew Motion of all people. And he said to me that poetry and stand up are about the only two things he could think of where the person is the vessel for the for the art. Was so I was surprised because to me a poem is a is a thing which sits separate, like a book or a or a play or or a painting indeed. We've just done Picasso. But he was he argued strongly against that and was I know that a poem also is is you it's completely you you're completely naked when you tell a poet so could it be the closer the person is to the the art then mm. the more we're likely to reject the art itself if we reject the person um which yeah, is why that, those it. horrific sculptures are still outside um, the bbc i forget what the guy's name is eric oh, Gill. Eric Gill, yeah. that's, yeah. that's um, just of, aston- uh, astonishing when you start looking at finding out about him and being like uh this is too much I mean, he this was, is too he much was to unreal. bear unreal yeah. you wouldn't have wanted to be an animal at his farm there <laughs> the um I, I, I was wondering I mean, on... talking of species barriers he had none <laughs> yeah it's, I, I remember the first time i read a biography of him, of him <laughs> and the first page you go he sounds like a quirky man <laughs> oh, this goes beyond quirk now this has made a, a, a leap beyond quirk which is why all biographies should just be one page yeah <laughs> oh, you're a nice child I there can't wait go. to hear the Morrissey Eric Gill album. His friends yeah. with the chicken. <laughs> oh, God. The, um, I wanted to ask you because 
I loved your book, uh, and we and we've talked about it before. Son of a Silverback, but I I was thinking about your your father, who for those people who haven't read the book yet, uh, your father was very manly, wasn't he? He was, you know, in terms of that idea yeah. of of an. And I wondered how he, what you feel he would have done in terms of it, in currently in this climate with the pandemic, what his attitude would have been towards what's going on. I think. To be fair to a lot of people, even me, in the, I was in Tenerife in February, for God's sake. I was on stage on March the 10th. And my, I, I think I even said, you know, obviously I'll follow the government guidelines, but so long as the theatres are open, I'll be on stage. I thought that was the right thing to do. So uh, to be fair to all people, I don't think many of us really, really knew the shape of this thing till about March the 20th. So were my dad still alive, he would have been one of those, oh, I've done this, I've been through that, I've survived this, I've survived that. A lot of the very old people, I'm lucky enough to have people in that generation alive, grandparents, we've got a fair few between us, me and Lindsay, they are, they, they're the ones not staying, so we're staying in to protect them, but there's a lot of them getting on the bus because it's what they've done since 1970. So Lindsay's 94-year-old granddad is like, I go to, he's Ukrainian, I will go to Morrison's, I've been to Morrison's every week. Um, so they they feel invincible by dint of how long they've been <laughs> surviving stuff. It's very curious. So what, I don't know if my dad would have gone as far as 5G conspiracies. He probably would have done a bit of Chinese blaming, he would enjoy it. Anything slightly right-wing he would have enjoyed. I think he would have been liked blaming China, he probably would have got into that. Yeah, I think it, yeah, is, I fair think it is fair to say that it's, it's only really in the last two weeks that the message has properly. We would send. There were a lot of mixed messages. There was not a fourth. I mean, we did a a, a COVID nineteen kind of special yesterday with 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 four scientists, uh, and you know, one of them. I read an article that he wrote at the beginning of March, and it was very clear to a lot of of people in research at that point something needed to be done, and this was not going to be a normal situation. And yet, that message I don't think actually got through or was properly delivered really <laughs> until the. 23rd 24th of march maybe something like that that that's yeah. very heartbreaking for me because i do feel like the government let us down massively and that you know they've known since january that this was something to look out for and for whatever reason they they've let us all down and now they're setting us on each other because people in inner city london are going to parks like it's very upsetting <laughs> it's yeah. really and also, yeah I, I mean it's all very well people for people like me say saying stay stay indoors but so many people particularly where I grew up, they don't have gardens. Some people don't even have, like, they've literally just got one room and tiny box bedrooms, so they're all sat in a in a flat. Um, I grew up in a council road. They, you don't have the space. I was lucky I had a garden when I was growing up, but lots of people don't. So the only reason I'm annoyed with all the sunbathing people is if they do go even stricter, they're going to take away the little bit of 30-minute walk that people need. People like my brother, of course, but my they're brother's in assisted accommodation. He's, and he's, all he's got is his room. He doesn't even have a reception. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. But of course, that's that, like, but, that's what that, I, like, but what I... The reason I'm saying is I think that they're deliberately putting this focus on people so that they can say it's the fault of, uh, you know, straw men that they say are doing this, that, the other and get people very angry at them because nobody wants to let down doctors and nurses and nobody wants to spread the virus. And so people are kind of projecting because they're bored in their houses and they're kind of attacking out. But actually, you know, it's it's largely created it's not really the reality that there's people really flouting stuff anyway we all know this is a sad conversation I, I want to ask you a little bit about what you are up to in this time like do you have like a very strict routine are you doing different things every day what kind of uh, I'm trying well, we've got a four-year-old which is as you know the mo- so evil it makes coronavirus <laughs> <laughs> it's so intense isn't it <laughs> I mean well, who speaking I, who of going I, outside I, like how do you not go outside with a the child they have to go outside they're like a dog I'll tell you who does need attacking all the people that lie and say this is as hard as it ever gets next year when they're five it gets slightly easier those liars because all it is is another hill you pass the third birthday and it can't be worse than this and of course it's worse when they're four because they're 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 now can ask questions and question things so we've had to keep structure in our lives more structure than we probably would choose to if we're in our pajamas going to sleep at 3 a.m because we've got a four-year-old so she annoyed there's not a syllabus i can follow because she's preschool she's sort of kindergarten age so i'm trying to just ramp things up so we're doing like one historical figure a day so she's obsessed well i don't know why with oliver cromwell and charles the first and heads being cut <laughs> off and all that stuff so we've we done we've done that to death and then she wanted to learn about queen so we did Boudicca the other day so we got the walls getting covered with a historical figure each day uh, then we try and do some letters and then it's just play in the afternoon but it just goes 
it's one to one. It's relentless. It's not like, okay, daddy, that's four hours. I'll just go and amuse myself in the corner. No, it is 12 hours of relentless one to one. Next, 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 board, 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 daddy. So that most of my day is spent with me and Lindsay juggling how to amuse Minna. And we've fallen slight. If I'm completely honest, I'll probably get in trouble for oversharing. I don't know if this happened to other couples. We're falling into a two and one pairing all the time. So one will run off and have some me time. Yeah. Like oh, this will be my me time today. This is it. Yeah. And then after this, because I've done this and Lindsay and Minna have been together, then I'll crop a Russell and Minna session after this. And Lindsay will do some press ups in the garden or something. So we're falling into a like two one pattern, which probably isn't very healthy, but it gives someone a, a breather at all times. Yeah, I'm trying that's to watch a movie once Minna goes down as well. Watch, watch. I love films. I love, obviously, I love books. So, yeah, just doing that. I like um, Alice Lowe, Alice the brilliant, brilliant uh, writer, director, and actor. She she put up a comment on uh, Facebook yesterday, just saying people keep asking if I'm getting loads of writing done. Yes, loads. The two children I live with pretty much keep themselves to themselves. I respect <laughs> their boundaries. They respect mine. They're all I don't want to interfere with, interfere with their projects. Yeah. I've got a, boy, a four-year-old that like, just had a fit so all of a sudden. At four. So what, what did I do? I didn't even have the argument. I just got the bottles out, washed them and gave them in the box. That's yes. It. So much of my life. So much of my life in the past week, especially, it's just been like, OK, that's what you want. Great. Yes. Yes. You're isn't, the isn't that liberating, Josie, when you just go, do you know what? I'm Not actually care. And let, so she poured water all over the floor the other day. I'm sorry, Danny. went, I don't care. And leave it. Leave the water on the floor. Leave it to stain the floor. It was like a, a, a cloud <laughs> lifting. I genuinely didn't care about my floor being ruined. It was great. Obviously, Lindsay came down and then kicked my head in. But up till that point, it was so liberating to genuinely stop caring about anything just you were for a just day. Going with the flow of chaos, you were in, yeah. you were embracing chaos. We should say we also should say also for if you didn't see the episode with Dean Burnett uh, that we did of this, and also there are he is currently doing a, a, a series as well about uh, how our brains and minds are, are, are kind of going to you know in some ways how we, how we're using them and uh, how we can keep them uh, in as good a shape as possible during this situation. It's One of the things that's come block. up a lot is uh, about the the worry that for younger children, the lack of contact with other people, whether that is, you know, it, that could in, in years to come be problematic. Mm. And what Dean was saying was, you know, don't get overly hung up on uh, the fact they're not physically seeing people. Do use things like, you know, what, like we're doing now, in fact, you know, but that way of communicating with people, if you can still create FaceTime, even without that, that is still very, very useful. So that's just if anyone didn't see that, you know, and you are getting worried about that, if you have a small child, that they still use those forms of FaceTime as well to create that kind of socialisation. There we go. It's just me saying something that's normal good. there. I'm not doing silly voice. I've done any silly voices of any of this. I, I'm going to start that. I'm saving that for the fourth week to start doing. <laughs> again. Russell, um, we've, we've, yeah, yeah. have you got a show and tell for us? The oh, genuine no. things on, on my desk. So I've got my half-finished research. I was in the middle of researching Karl Marx and Charlie Chaplin for Evil Genius. So I've just carried on reading about them because they're both really interesting characters. So this, if anyone wants a really good, not in a like student politics, spread the wealth type way, but Francis um, Weed. What's wrong with, I don't think it's student politics to say that we need no. redistribution of wealth. Come on. No, but I'm not, I'm not, not it's not, a, what I mean is as a biography, it's not about the politics. It's not about the kind of, this is how the, the manifesto, it's in there, but it's a Francis Ween. So it's a real good, like, romping, mudslinging biography. <laughs> this is so of funny that you're like, no, don't worry, don't worry, you really, you won't be left wing. Look, it's, it's my Francis <laughs> Ween. Like, dude, Listen, a lot it, of people this... will read that and go, Karl Marx is not for me, but it's, it's, his life is an amazing story in itself. Well, mixed listen, with, we're think allowed like a, to like think what like we a, like. No, yes, no, 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 Josie. I think you're misunderstanding. No, no, I know. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just, you know. I'm getting worried that you're getting now. You know, to you, you've been that 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 first march you go on when this is over is going to be <laughs> the, the, the volume is going to be wonderful. I don't this go on march. marches anymore. I've got a child. Yeah. I tell you, just talk about the politics for a second. When people read a biography of Karl Marx, they'll realise how wrong they are. It's so rational and reasonable. A lot of the stuff he says, it's just been. Um, commodified and sold back to us and told in a way that isn't no no people may laugh but when you read it a lot of it is just bloody common sense uh, uh -huh. and also just to pair that we think like a cat right at the, the start of this horrible lockdown period i lost my life not lifelong my 18 year companion oh. keith my bermilla cat who's been there from where before my dad died before i started stand up through all my weird and bumpy relationship he's just been through everything and he's just pegged it. We had to go for a diet home rather than go to the vets for obvious reasons, which was also 
it was not as traumatic as I thought it was going to be. Um, I, I, he got right to the stage where he's sort of lying down see with his life plane before his eyes. And I finally found a vet that could come and treat, you know, finish the process in the garden. But I now I've seen that. It's, it's sort of changed my mind about, you know, when a cat, a lot of owners are like, oh, my cat limped last week off to the vets. Whereas I let him go right to the, the end of the life. Anyway, if I can fight, I found a breeder near me, um, a cat breeder who's a vet, which means I can safely acquire a new kitten during lockdown because she will come to me and everything. So I'm reacquainting myself with cat psychology and cat training. A lot of people don't train their cat. They think, oh, it's just a cat. It's not just a cat. That's prejudice. It can be trained just like a dog. And also, lastly, I'm one of the reasons I'm such a monkey cage fan and everything. And, and in our time with Velvet Bag, I love... I've gone down the nerdy, let's understand COVID, let's get into the science of it, what else is there to do, and managed to acquire um, some antibody tests, very similar to the ones used in Taiwan, Singapore and Hong Kong, but provided by a, but they, it is a UK Queen's Trust Certificate Art Bank supply. This is before everyone, two weeks ago, when everyone said antibody tests are the future. So I was laughed at by all my friends. They, you can't get them now, obviously. So I obviously immediately did an antibody test, just hoping that I would come out positive because that would mean I'm, I would like to be like delivering groceries and stuff like that. The reason I'm not doing it is I'm like, what if what if I accidentally pass it on to someone vulnerable when I'm helping out? But I am also we, we, do, we should say that even the, the current test, there is nothing that is, that is uh, as far as I know, again, from the conversation we had last night, there's nothing that is 100 percent. accurate. No, about so, 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 yeah, so, so it's so it's very you should uh, even then it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it, just be very, very careful with it's those. Just home, it's just home tea. You like you do a little lancet pinprick of blood comes out you put the blood on you watch it develop but it comes out negative as i say only 70 80 percent reliable but hey kids you've got to have a hobby so come <laughs> on and testing antibodies each time we come back to paler and paler have, paler. You, done have you done the test i did the test 27 <laughs> times today the uh, i loved i thought when you were going to say about two weeks ago i thought you were going to refer to the queen's trust element i thought you were going to go i know about two <laughs> Oh, no one liked the Queen, but last night because she started singing again, everyone loves her. <laughs> <laughs> it was a real, it was a rousing speech, wasn't it? But uh, you know, I, my, my, I wouldn't my, know. My yeah, great, I have. You got to remember, Lindsay, both ninety-four and Ukrainian, meaning he got it from the Russians and the Germans. So I've many times he's told us what he went through. I won't even describe it on here. It's so heavy. So. I know what she's trying to do, but staying in your lounge playing PlayStation, as admirable as it is, <laughs> Darren, I'm not going to draw an equivalence with my <laughs> Lindsay's granddad who fled Russian famine and German fascism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me old fashioned. Yeah, the, uh, I, I think it's like, I think it's it, like it, I, yeah, I mean, that's why I have so much sort of awe for the people who are having to, you know, go into hospitals and, and work oh under, you know, insufficient protection and. Stuff like that, because so those what, people really are like. Uh, Rupert Beale, Dr. Rupert Beale, who was on last night, and he, you know, is seeing a lot of what's going on. And, and he said, you know, the, the good thing he can say is that the front line of the NHS is currently holding. But the one of the things to remind people about is one of the reasons it is holding is keep taking this thing seriously. Don't think, hang on a minute, it's been a couple of weeks, everything seems fine. But he, oh, he oh, I'm sorry, just want to do a supermarket because. A key, oh, I do a wider clap on Key Worker Clap Day. So I don't just go NHS. I do, I do a circular clap. And in my mind, that's the refuse collectors, the informal carers, nurses. Postal obviously. workers as well. Postal They're still work. coming out, going Any, to all the different houses. Absolutely. And, and also my family being demographically as it is, I've got a lot of people working in supermarkets. I don't think people realise what it's like to work in a frigging supermarket. Someone the other day got spat at because they could, someone wouldn't bring out what some product or something. I mean, you've got a, you've got this screen here, a plastic screen, while you're taking people's money at the till. From what we know about this COVID, it exists in the air as respirated particles. So, you know, you don't have to be Albert Einstein to work out those particles are floating either side of the screen. You're going to get up for your lunch break. You might walk through where someone's breathed out. No one in the supermarket has got PPE equipment. No one. Um, so there's a lot of people sorry to take the tone serious but and i'm not no. taking anything away from doctors and nurses but the, the people need to widen their understanding of what a key worker is because if no one's getting fed and if the shelves don't have food on them then we're all in trouble because nurses use supermarkets as well so every everyone 
it's, it's key. I, I'll tell you what's sobering. I was saying this the other day. If you're currently sat at home and don't need to work, you're not key. That has dawned on me quite, <laughs> quite savagely. Hang on. Like, Up until so then, you thought you were an essential, <laughs> an essential part of society no, as a comedian. I didn't realise how, un- how unkey. <laughs> I'm like the least key person I know. Like, if our profession vanished, when it everything has. went back to normal in October, no, but even in October, say it never restarted, no one would care. <laughs> We're that unclean. <laughs> well, on that level of existentialism, as you confront your front, your purposelessness in an already purposeless uh, universe, uh, we're going to go over. We'll come back to you, Russell. We have some questions for you uh, that yes. on the live feed, and we'll come back to you. But now, uh, please welcome uh, the singer, the performer, uh, broadcaster. Everyone's a broadcaster nowadays. Bob, how are you doing, how Bob? How are you doing, Bob? Bye. Oh, you're so oh, on, you're mute, on mute, oh, I think. You're muted. Don't worry, this is a very common thing. Nearly everyone's first oh, yeah, look, second. Look, there there you working. are. You're with Yay. us now. Brilliant. How are you, Bob? Yeah, I have to, well, I have to apologise slightly because I, I do see that everybody else is at home. I'm not actually at home. I'm caring for my mum who has some dementia through this. So, wow. um, so I've okay? got the opposite of, of Russ, which is that I've got a 90-year-old teenager. Um, <laughs> so, so I'll say things like, right mum no you can't go you can't go there and she'll throw something down and go why not why not and she'll have a stop and um and that's it's really interesting it's really interesting so I'm in my the home I grew up in which is not where I normally live Mm -hmm. and I'm sort of adapting it to me but so what I've done at the moment is I've colonized two bedrooms and I've colonized bits of the living room and some of the garden and garage and I'm just basically kind of like a uh, like an invading force in my mother's home and um <laughs> and, and i'm not working not because people are asking me questions about bedecker all day i'm not working <laughs> because because somebody's going around going where are my glasses <laughs> where did i put that what's that where's where, why why are we all staying in mm-hmm. i've explained the global pandemic every morning for the last two weeks oh, wow. and i dare say i may continue to do that for the next 14 it's but really, you know what? We all have our crosses to bear. Well, but it is one of these things that makes you realise what, like, more than ever, what life is about. Yeah. Do you understand? Like, thinking yeah. everyone is at their different places in their lives. Places everyone, in their lives. Everyone has got difficult things going on. And, like, it, yeah, it, it, it's helpful to sort of think about that and foster compassion for one another and just understand. Like, there's that line in... Um, what is it in Alone in Berlin? Uh, it's the Hans Falada book, which is I don't think I would recommend reading at the moment because it's incredibly sad and hard. Uh, uh, um, but there's a line in it where it's just like everyone is suffering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like everyone has got something, something very intense going on at the moment. Wow, that that sounds like something which in years to come will prove a very interesting start point for creativity. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's great. It's absolutely great. We have, we, we, you talked about routines. We have a little routine. I get up, I do all of our beginning coffees and stuff. I go for my walk while she does her eyes and her medication. And then I come back and we do things together. And then I do some work and then I, I make lunch. I mean, I do all the shopping and cooking and all that stuff. And, and now also the cleaning. I've called myself the Dementia Cheery Maid Service um, <laughs> because I, I come with cheer and I can do gardening. I mean, Five words you've never heard me say. I washed my own car um, the other week. I mean, that was a first, you know. And, and then I remembered that I used to wash cars when I was a teenager round here because my parents, you know, because your parents weren't giving you enough pocket money. No. So, uh, so my dad said, well, get that job because my father was Czech, Russ. My father was Czech and my mother's German. And um, uh, and they both uh, became British, but um, but they both, you know, had stories. So I went out and I used to clean other people's cars and I thought, oh, I remember doing that. And what I didn't remember was that I was as bad as it as, as, as I find I am now. <laughs> Did you I not even want to pay yourself? <laughs> it looks as though I've just kind of abandoned bits of the car. I went over it so quick and there's whole bits that have gone, what about me? What about me? <laughs> Do you not like the roof? What? <laughs> <laughs> it has been talking about that. I, 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 it's been very interesting seeing various different people who, before this began, already are in a situation where they can't really get out of the house, where they have very little access to outside. A lot of people with kind of you know sometimes with with uh, different disabilities. It's been very interesting again, as you were saying, Josie, about that idea of. Uh, 
hopefully in, in one way broadening our imagination and understanding of people who this is not a period of time which will then end this is something that they have to deal with that an inaccessibility to social life and inaccessibility you know is, is a daily thing so I think that's been a uh, a very interesting thing to to kind of get a greater window on Absolutely. And that's what I said to my mum, you know, when she says, oh, can they not come around with the dog? And I go, no, mum, because we're in isolation, we're in isolation. remember. And, um, and, then, and then I go, it's just me for 14 weeks, mum, possibly longer. And I can <laughs> see a sort of sadness. <laughs> <laughs> Does she ever say, don't sing that one again? You've done that. You've done that enough now. I mean, in terms of your repertoire, have you found that your uh, is it slightly changing due to uh, your mum's requests on on what songs are going to? You know, is she going more for Leonard Cohen or Bob Dylan or you know, wh 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 which angle is she going for? Well, I bought. I bought. You know, I'm I'm, I'm doing things to amuse us. So for that actually works, you know, as opposed to one that was there when when the rest of her family were alive, which is not now, and um, and that you can actually see things on um, from a distance, and and that was that's been a big success. And I bought an Alexa, and she stood in front of Alexa when it arrived with just this face of wonder, and she kept saying, "It's magic, mm. it's magic," and and at the moment it's playing her Mozart piano pieces. And so, um, so what I found is that I can sort of. She didn't very much like the Alexa play the blues. She was not keen on that. <laughs> really, she'd really had enough of the blues after about an hour. But, um, but you know, she she's en she's enjoying that, so that's good. No, you know, you live and learn, live and learn. I'm cheery today. I mean, I think we all we all have our ups and our down days, don't we? Yeah. I think there's also we were talking about this the other day, which is the other it's, thing to remember. the other thing to remember is we normally also always have our ups and downs. Sometimes the reason for them, and I think sometimes we can so focus on the reason being this this sense sometimes of, of isolation that we may well forget going. Oh yeah, normally by about Tuesday when I'm on tour or when I'm doing this or when I've had that failed meeting or that idea, I've also found myself feeling wretched and ragged and strange. You know, yeah. oh the human condition. Um, yeah. You've got some new uh, work coming out. You fortunately, you, you pretty much finished your tour, didn't you? The 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 yeah, the, yeah. The, oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Well, and, and it was odd, you know, because I again I felt like Russ, you know, if the theatres are open and they want us, um, but actually, uh, when I arrived in Otley and um, and I saw, you know, that some people had come out, I I couldn't. The first song I, I I said to Jenny, who was playing with me that night. I said, it's the elephant in the room and we have to address it because this was a sold out show mm. to which only 50% of the people mm. appeared. Yes, right? I had a gig like that. Yeah. And, yeah, and you, you have to address it, you know. And so I said to everybody, I, I understand how how much people give when they come now. And, and it, it's meaningful you're here. And as I was saying, I thought I'm not going to be able to sing the first song because I started, I was crying. I thought, no, no, don't, don't. And I just started mm. singing. It was all a bit little wobbly at the beginning because my throat was, because it, I knew what it meant. And then we, we went into it. And by the end, you know, we, we, and I knew that that was the last gig I'd do for some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it felt incredibly meaningful. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it just felt incredibly meaningful. And I'm sure everybody who gigs feels this about the last one they did. But, oh, it, my heart, you know, my heart was splintered into everything. My God. Yeah. Also, for about four days, it was a wonderful balm for our ego. If yeah. you turn, if you turned up and you went, there's only half full room. You would go, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure it was sold out. I mean, I, I've got a couple who who are going to be nameless, but who who are champions of Pollyanna, and they'd come away from a gig. You know, I wish there were two men and a dog. It goes sold out. Sold out. I don't know. I was there, baby. <laughs> but I've always thought that's just brilliant. Actually, right now, I think Pollyanna is our motif. <laughs> No, there no. will be a vaccine. It's tomorrow. The theatres will be open in June. No. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, I, I do wish that there would be some sort of pamphlet delivered to me about what to do in the slightly longer term to entertain mm. my household because yes. like like the first few weeks I was like great great and I've been getting a lot of um, inspiration from Instagram but for example this morning I there's this Instagram parenting thing where all these incredible creative people put out these little trays full of rice and toys for their two-year-olds and then the two-year-olds sit and 
play with the rice and I did it and then my daughter just <laughs> threw rice all over the house the house is covered in rice it, mm. it, it didn't work and that's half of the ideas a rice based <laughs> that's a good that is a good thing I don't want a child that can be fulfilled by rice yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it can work for my mum Oh, get her a sensory tray. Genuinely, they're supposed to be very calming. There you go. <laughs> the um, we were because you mentioned Notley, you mentioned which, Notley is, which is I presume the courthouse. Were you, were you at the courthouse? Yeah. Which is a yeah. wonderful, wonderful venue. And yeah. we will just quickly mention that the uh, the tip jar that we have on this show is basically we're uh, getting a, a fund together to uh, first of all create uh, some kind of uh, safety net for some of the uh, performers, the artists, musicians, etc., who will have no work for for at least the next four or five months. By the by the looks of things, it's going to be quite a long time. And also, we are trying to make sure that we're, we're getting enough that we can also give some of that to some of the art centres, some of the smaller places, as Josie and I have often mentioned before. Very often, they're not just an art centre in the evening. They are also somewhere where many local groups meet and there's lots of kind of socialising. So we're hoping to to make some money we can share with places like that, the Rondo in Bath and and, and other venues as well. And um, the, Little well, Angel, the Little Angel Puppet Theatre. Oh, the Ronnie Drew will be glad. We, Ronnie Drew, who's uh, who started there. I, I don't know, know if anyone but uh, Ronnie is absolutely wonderful. We did a book shambles with him uh, uh, a while ago and has written a wonderful book about his his journey into puppetry. And uh, we managed to do a whole podcast without even getting around to the fact that he worked on Labyrinth, you know, with David Bowie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never got around to that. We was we were still in Bungle and Zippy before we got what there. What is Ridiculous. the point of me? <laughs> Any of us. Yes. Well, I'll be dealing with that later on. I'm talking to a philosopher, so we, I'll come back with an answer tomorrow. Um <laughs> Bob, you've got a new, uh, you've got recordings coming out with uh, the fourth choir. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I can. Uh, we were going to do a concert together in uh, June um, because they they did something on my album on Bob Brell and me, and um, and they're friends of mine, and uh, the person who helps produce their work is a friend of mine. So we I, we we agreed that we would do this collaboration. And that they would do some songs that were, uh, we were looking at all the people who were hidden. So, for example, gay composers who you didn't know about, like not Noel Coward, but people like Bob Crew, who wrote Walk Like a Man, who, yeah. and, and who, was, who was gay um, at a time when being in Simpan Ali was not, it was not a thing that you said, you know. And so people, people like that, interesting people, and and so because of because of our arranging and stuff, we'd started arranging for the choir, me and and Jenny, and I said, oh, what about a song that John and I wrote, John McDaniel, last summer, and John did a vocal arrangement of it, and we wrote this last summer, and we went in before everything went crazy, we went into Saint Silas in Kentish Town, and and I now remember that with the most enormous joy because we were all in a room together you know 30 singers and the recordist and um and the bass player and the and Jenny on Dudley Phillips and Je and Jenny on keyboards and Dominic conducting and the singers singing and me and we recorded it live as a sort of calling card for this upcoming concert which now probably won't happen when it was supposed to and uh, and anyway when I finished it we started to mix it and, and things started to be getting strange in our society at that point um, and pe and I played the mix to people and people would go, did you write this last week? And I'd go, no, I wrote this last year. And they go, well, how did you know? And I'd go, I didn't. I wrote this last year. And they go, well, you, you do need to put it out. And I go, well, we are actually. We were going to do that anyway. Um, so um, so that's what's coming out on Friday. And, um, and Nate did a video. I mean, we're just a cottage industry now. We're remote <laughs> people doing all this remotely. Nate made a beautiful video using pictures of the choir that were taken on the day. Um, Steve Ollathorne's picture of me. We all know Steve Ollathorne, magnificent mm -hmm. Steve Ollathorne. And then on all the pictures I've taken on my walks and travels for, you know, years, um, pictures of the world. And, uh, and yeah, and it's out there on YouTube in my troubled days. Cool. Um, I don't want, I don't want to put you under any pressure, but uh, would you like to sing something a cappella for us? Yeah, or... do you know what? I, I, yeah, I've, I've written down all the words because because I'm the worst person at remembering lyrics. I, I just, you know, and, and I'm the worst lyrics for me are the ones I wrote myself. <laughs> the interesting thing is Bob Dylan, Leonard Cohen, Jacques Brel. The ones I've written myself are usually the ones that go, you know, mm-mm. 
And, and then I have to apologise to the audience and say, I'm really sorry I got those lyrics wrong because I wrote them and that just <laughs> feels appalling to me. Um, I'll sing you a bit. Yeah. Thank you. OK, are you ready? <laughs> yes, <laughs> sure. Are. Ladies talk? and gentlemen, please, please welcome to her room <laughs> and your room. Barbion. <laughs> Morning light brings promises, promises of sun, promises of rain and leaves, new life begun. Morning light sets birds on air, singing on the wing, calling orchestras of joy to every living thing. Flowers open, softly smiling in these morning rays. All of this can keep me walking in my troubled days, in my troubled days. All of this can soothe me in my troubled days. Rippling sand. Oh, it says loads more. <laughs> more. I haven't got to the sad bit yet. I haven't even got to the sad bit. Don't give up now. <laughs> <laughs> but I, what I, what, what's lovely is on the video you'll hear me with the with the fourth choir singing this is a duet. That's the verse I sing on my own, and then they duet with me. It's not like Barb and some backing. It's it's me and them in full voice, and um, and I and I'm incredibly proud and thrilled to be able to have that out there in the world right now. Um, when uh, yeah, when thank you so when, much, Barb. This is uh, we will put up uh, links to links all, to all of your work as well. Everyone, go and look up Barb Younger, and uh, we we will make sure that those are attached to all of this as well. And uh, so that becomes actually available on Friday. Is that right? Or that's uh, right. You, that's yeah. right. You can pre-order it and pre-order the streams and all that malarkey. Yeah. Well, this is a great thing. Again, everyone, I'm, I'm sure watching this knows anyway, but uh, at these times when you can't get to gigs, if you do, if you're still after something, you know, try and find those different places that you can buy uh, the work of people to keep them going as well so they can still keep creating things as well. I know we're non-key workers, Russell is in, but hopefully every now and again, it, 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 it does give us, it, there, there is a pragmatism to bringing joy every now and again. And also music is key, Robin. Music, music is key. key. <laughs> also... <laughs> <laughs> some people are still on their full salaries and some people are furloughed with 80% of their salaries and other it. people have absolutely no had salary. all of their work for the next so so far cancelled and so like you know if I were on a salary I would definitely feel differently to where I'm not and so I think it's a time again where we're all kind of looking around to each other and being like okay so you're there I'm here let's see what we can do yeah. and it doesn't necessarily mean we're anyone has anything they're not comfortable with or not able to do in fact absolutely. quite the opposite Thank you so much, Barb. We will, yeah, thank uh, you. It's been lovely to talk to you. It's yeah, that was really you great. Too. Thank you. See you soon. That's, See you um, soon. I had a question about the picture behind you, and I love this painting oh, because yeah, all the way through, as a big fan both of Rod Serling's The Twilight Zone and Night Gallery, I've almost imagined that at some point I'm either going to see some of your family walking into that painting and into the <laughs> distance or walking out. And uh, so it's added, added a lovely little extra bit of jeopardy for me. Peter, so we've had someone ask, they say, who's the painting? Who's, who's done that painting that's beautiful? Well, any art, any art, arty farty people would be able to tell. So when I, when I was, um, uh, when I left London, I said to Lindsay, right, there, there was this, there's um, a website where art students, they get paid when you get a nice painting for your wall and they copy stroke for stroke any classic painting you want. So that's a full oil painting. Uh, of Pissarro's Hyde Park, so I've got a view of London oh. the whole time in the office. and it's beautiful. Obviously, you can't tell it over, over this connection, but the texture of the the paint. Of, and uh, if you've seen the original, or even if you just go on and Google Images and look at the original, it is amazing. Like the little so, the, the the ladies' um, parasols, the way the paint goes across is exactly the same. It's so honestly, you've not just, just got a beautiful just got a beautiful painting. You're also enabling the next generation of art forgers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It's an Essex uh, art. <laughs> <and faith. laughs> Can I give a lovely recommendation as well? Because uh, yes. I'm really, I, li I like me recommendations. I like Joseph's one. Um, I watched last night a brilliant, 
sort of horror thriller body horror thing called swallow it's directed um by carlo mirabella davis and it's starring Haley bennett who should go on to have an amazing career about a pregnant woman suffering from something called pika which is where you can't stop yourself eating weird foreign objects um Lindsay had it a bit when she was pregnant with Minna. She just kept eating ice. So that technically is pika. Yes. If, you're, if, you, if you're eating something of no nutritional value for the texture, that is a form of pika, this disorder. But as you can imagine, this being a body horror, um, Carlo Mirabella Davis, who I've got to be honest, I hadn't heard of as a director. Apparently she got a standing ovation at Sundance when it was screened. Fantastic. Hour and 30 minutes, even if you're knackered because the kids have ruined you. You've only got one hour 34. Brilliant horror length. Give it a watch. A small F feminist film everyone will love it it's fantastic Sounds i should cool. met because you mentioned that as well you mentioned there about during pregnancy uh, as i mentioned alice low already i will re for anyone who's never seen prevent yeah. alice is part of a really oh, great group yeah wonderful it's all about and basically uh, a heavily pregnant even. woman which alice low was uh, at the time she made it when she was eight months pregnant she wrote it she directed she starred in it and uh, it's about her baby inside basically giving her uh quite yes. kind of violent instruction and it, it's a and it's a remote i mean it's a really good film uh, all the work that I've seen her do and also the stuff she's done with uh, Steve Oram and Tom Meaton and all those is brilliant. But when you sometimes watch it and you go, and she was eight months, like there's a couple of times where there's a bit where she's climbing through a cat flap. And I remember chatting to her and she went, yeah, it was weird filming because every now and again I'd suddenly go, no, I think we should use the stunt double for this. Like there's a couple of scenes where you go, yeah, it's, it's a remarkable bit of work. And she's, she's uh, someone who all of her work is, is, is worth paying attention and to. It's, and it's, wor it's worth saying like <clears throat> these one hour, 32 hour films, because a lot of the films me and Lindsay have always meant to watch together, we can't because we're locked down with the four year old. So we, we want to do a Godfather night, but there's not enough gap between Minna finally losing consciousness and us losing consciousness. We never have three, there isn't going to be three hours. So we're looking for these really banging one hour 30, one hour 50 movies in and out, but a nice, and it's definitely not Tarkovsky. That's for shizzle. Right? Yeah. Oh, I think you could probably do Mirror, actually. That's only about 1 minute 43. Yes, 1 minute 43, feels like rather. Two hours 43. It feels no, like it does time, not. It? It's Eric. How dare you? Me and Derek Malcolm are going to come round your house when this is over. Um, we better we better go uh, over to Matt, because uh, if anyone watch this knows that also our signal for, it lasts about an hour. And uh, Russell, can I say thank you so much for... No, thank uh, you. Go and uh, check out uh, Russell. If you do get a chance, by the way, if you've not read it already, I really, really enjoyed uh, Russell's book, Son of a Silverback. It's, it's, it's got so many different ideas, and it's so much about growing up and family and relationships. And this is it is very good. And it's uh, it's all right if you've – it's that old thing. You know, I, I know one shouldn't perhaps use, use Woody Allen quotes too often, but when he said, you know, <laughs> when, he, when he watches films, uh, he says he's like a chef. All he can taste is the fact that there's too much basil in it. And I think that's exactly the same thing with anyone who's created anything. More often than not, no one else can see the error that to you is jarring or huge. It's a really good book. True. Very kind of you to say. Um, we're now, uh, thank you to uh, Barb. Thank you very much to uh, Russell. And uh, we're now going to go to someone who is just a, a remarkable, brilliant uh, a performer who's uh, at the, I've been watching. He's been doing some, some fantastic stuff during lockdown where he's basically had him doing shows in his back garden with his neighbours watching over the fence. He's been doing stuff with his kitchen as well uh, he, in terms of. Of, of juggling and the creativity of juggling and creating physical ideas. He is remarkable. So uh, hopefully his image is not frozen. We're going to find out. Oh, no, Matt is. What's been wonderful, by the way, you, you don't know this. At home, we can uh, here we can see every single person. And Matt has appeared to be incredibly stoical. He's just been watching with a, a, a beautiful motionlessness. And uh, so it took us a while to realise that actually that's because his connection's not working. We've been frozen on his face for uh, quite a long time, uh, and oh, now, now we have it back. Oh, my darling, stick me. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, hey, Matt, how are you doing? You all right? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I'm very good. You've got a backing track, by the way, uh, from uh, half of Johnny and the Baptists. Uh, okay. So uh, I just suddenly heard uh, this this bellowing, this wonderful bellowing. I thought that doesn't sound like Matt. Um, Matt, <laughs> I, I was just saying you know, the stuff you've been putting out during the lockdown, these wonderful shows that you've been doing for your neighbours watching over the fence and doing stuff with your kitchen as well. I mean, you are someone who 
you know, I've, I've seen you work with audiences. Ut- ut- utterly brilliant what you do in, in its creativity, the, the, the physical comedy and ideas in, 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 in your juggling, your balancing, etc. At oh. this moment, are you finding... I mean, obviously, the tremendous restriction not to have an audience is, tr- is very, very difficult anyway, psychologically and for so many other things. Psychologically and financially. For creativity, are you go- have you gone, right, I've now got this situation. What am I now going to create with the limits of these walls? Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, to an extent. It, it's, it's weird because, for me, juggling and the tricks and stuff has always just been a, a sort of a vehicle to connect with an audience, you know. So without that fun with an audience i'm kind of reduced to relying on my actual skills um so yeah it's fun to to make stuff i enjoyed i enjoyed doing the stuff in my garden that is the most i've talked to my neighbors ever um i'm 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 a hermit um but yeah you know it's it, me i mean you know this it's partly there's the fun almost of going well i've got some time now so let's be a maker and let's make things and see what i can make with these restrictions and that's always it's always nice to have restrictions when you're making oh she's taking the end but then the other half of me is i need an audience i need to be in front of people who are shouting at me so i can shout back and that's what i love the most so i'm you know i mean i i am you know there are people suffering way worse than than us you know but um i miss being in a a dark room in front of people mm. it's, it's it's doing something bad to my brain well i sorry i'm back in the game now having my um daughter uh have my I, but i agree i think I, but i agree i think if you are a performer and you've performed over decades your whole body and brain is wired to it and you do need it it's and, and so even with we're doing these streaming gigs it's wonderful but it's never it's not the same it's, it's not, not the, the same, same right? there was a there was a moment a couple of years ago when um i was having a sort of i was having a depressed day and as a kind of joke my wife just turned to me and went yay matt ricardo yay yeah. and it, it worked <laughs> it, it flipped a switch in my head and i was so ashamed but i was like you know do it again that was good <laughs> it completely worked so yeah you know you I've been doing this for 33 years, so my, my there's a part in my lizard brain that needs to be in front of people, and it's pathetic. <laughs> but, you know, but I think well, no, I think it's, it's maybe, not pathetic. You know, it's what we are. Yeah, it's true. It's also for every- that's a specific kind of connection. For everyone, there are different forms of connection, and I think also it is it is a chemical thing because it is it can be a control on uh, you. You know exactly where to funnel your anxiety. You know exactly where your adrenaline goes. You know exactly you know that point half an hour before a gig where you realise that you can't do too many other things because you're beginning to narrow down into all of those things are things that as as Josie and you and I know this is something that very often you're doing every single night of the week, and if you're in Edinburgh, sometimes five six times a day this is this is the the, the rhythm of your life and, and, so and I, don't know, same, I don't know if it's true for you guys but for me when i'm on stage that's when I, when i'm on stage that's when i feel the most the most me that's when i feel the most confident the most capable the most grown up you know it, it's when i'm off stage that i feel that i can't cope with things people and cry i think that's what again for a lot of people out there at the yeah. moment it is it's about, about uh what we might consider to be our purpose has been removed whether you're a performer whether it's the job you do whether it's the relationships you have or some of the people that normally you would spend some time caring for and you can't at the moment all of those different things are about a kind of is is, is a sense of purpose and as we all know you know especially for, for elderly people one of the things you really realize when you get to know an elderly person well is that the loss of purpose is tremendously damaging and that that's what yeah. we need to try and keep making sure that everyone, you know, has some sense of that. Mm. Um, Matt, uh, sorry, I seem to be very serious today. That's, uh, uh, I hope that's, that's all, all right. The, um, um, but uh, I was going to mention, by the way, just because uh, on a totally separate thing, but Barb was talking uh, about some of the songwriters, uh, some of the gay songwriters, LGBT songwriter stuff, and a, a, a book which is really great, uh, just a recommendation, uh, David Bowie Turned Me Gay by Daryl Bullock. I, I've, I've mentioned it before. I've just quickly mentioned that as another tip for anyone who might be looking for a book. Um, Matt, what are you uh, – you, you have uh, – I, I believe we're, we're now going to try and – 
create in your front room <laughs> that sense of tension, uh, fear, <laughs> ultimately elation uh, that is required for us to survive? There is there is so often tension in my front room. Um, so, well, I know that I know that you beautiful nerds like a show and tell, and you like a mm. book, right? So I'm going to do both. So I'm going to show and tell this, right? This is a it's just a wooden box this is a cigar box and this is one of the key props for my work and it is uh, a box that cigars used to be sold in and the reason it became a juggler's prop is because 100 or so years ago in the heyday of kind of vaudeville a juggler would roll into a town go to the cigar shop ask for the boxes that were going to be thrown out and then get free props that they wouldn't have to carry around and if they found something cool to do with them then they had free props in whatever town they would go to so that's how this became a prop and i've got one of my favorite books here this is um juggling the art and its artists um which is i mean you can you can see how much i love this book yeah. um so the history of the cigar box that would be wc fields in uh, 1901 there are cigar boxes on his prop table there. We've got uh, R. Morello and Partners. We've got... So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you all the people that are on stage with me. That's the great Bella Cremo. When I go on stage, because as a solo performer, when I'm on stage, that's... Uh, that's that's Bella Cremo. What a great show poster that is. When I go on stage, I, I am on my own, but not because the joy of working in circus is that when I pick this up, what I'm doing with it, the material that I do with it is honed and developed over the last 150 years by all these people. And it's the job of the variety artist to take something that's been a bit forgotten about, blow the dust off it, give it a twist, do it well, and then pass it down the line to the next person. And I'm the current person. So I'm going to do a couple of weird in, in my home on a webcam, but still hopefully they will be in some way meaningful. So am I in shot? I'm in shot. Yeah. So no, no sort of chance. Mm. I'm going to try one that doesn't often work first time. <laughs> 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 Perfect! <laughs> See, now the curse of the juggler is I have to keep doing it until it works. So we could be here for some time. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So that's a little bit of cigar boxes with hopefully a little bit of context to make it maybe a little bit more meaningful. That's beautiful. Yes, uh, Matt, that was wonderful. And where can people find out? I mean, because you, you have got stuff, you're putting up stuff at the moment and also find out about, about your work generally. Yeah, well, mattricardo.com. Um, follow me on Twitter, Matt Ricardo. Instagram, Matt Ricardo. Um, I'm doing every Wednesday on my blog, on my website, I'm doing an hour's worth of my favourite comedy, circus, TV, weird stuff to watch. And also, as from... About an hour's time, I'm doing a two-week project on YouTube where I will teach you how to juggle. Um, please don't learn to juggle because I need the gigs for me. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I'm doing this teach yourself to juggle thing, which starts today, later today on YouTube. Thank you so much, Matt. Sounds Thank really you very pleasure. much. This morning we uh tomorrow uh we have singing i think i think i'm right saying we've got nicole smith who's absolutely fantastic uh, amazing blues singer uh, we have tim mitchin uh joining us which will be nine o'clock at night where he is so uh oh, wow that, that's going to be a nice meeting of mind um and uh we have lots of other people joe oh, jo 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 joanna neary will be with us as well one of our favorite comedians so joanna neary nicole smith and tim minchin uh also we're, we're uh, oh, this, uh it's not actually joe neary it's celia Oh, oh, one of Celia Celia characters. oh no, no. Celia. Oh, Celia, right. Yes, uh, so Joanna Neary will not be here. 
Celia <laughs> will be, but Joanna Neary won't be. I think we got out of that one. That's fine. Um, and uh, thanks very much, everyone who's donated as well. I just mentioned another thing. We're doing a Patreon special because oh, yeah. uh, there are we, we, we've never profited from it. That We've been doing stuff now for, I don't know, probably a decade nearly of, of recording yeah. things. And uh, all of the money that we get from the Patreon thing always just goes back into creating more and more stuff. We've got a documentary about Richard Feynman that we've put out again uh, recently. And also today on, on my feed and hopefully a few other people's feed, we'll be putting out all of our, or as many as we can. Can. actually we can't put out all because we've got over 200 uh chaos of delight films in which various wow. scientists actors uh performers uh, and others talk about the things that give them a chaos of delight so have a look at that support us for our patreon if you can and we'll be doing a special patreon only show on wednesday evening wonderful so have a nice wonderful. day robin so have a nice day robin enjoy yourself you have a nice day as well you get to find the sofa, still- by the way just in case you're worried right. and thanks again matt right. that was brilliant thanks again matt that was brilliant